All right, so now let's take a look at how we will take this information from a set of data from our histogram and use that to create either a frequency polygon or an, o an ogive graph. All right, so our main thing is here is you'll notice in the directions that we're going to need to enter the upper class boundaries. So let's go back to our histogram and let's write down those upper class boundaries real quickly. So um, right here, first first class, the upper class limit is one. And we're, for sake of, of discussion here, you know, we could probably be more precise, but the max is, is less than or equal to that. Well, let's make ourselves, let's make this easier for ourselves, okay? So class limit, oops, excuse me. Upper class limit. Okay, so first one is 123. We'll put out here our frequency, and there are six things in our frequency. Okay, let's go on to the next class. Upper class limit is 176. There's 10 items in that class. Next one is, we'll call it 229. 229, and there are 10 things in that class. Uh, next one is 282, and there are zero things. Next class is 335, and there's one. Next class is 389, and there are zero. And the last class is 442, and there is one item. Now, you know, it might not have been the best thing in the whole world that I didn't actually you know round get those decimals perfectly but for what we're going to be doing this will be exact enough um you know if, if we were doing this for a statistical if we were writing up an analysis for an article or we we're you know being, being more precise it'd be very important to keep track of those decimal values for those limits in this case here though rounding down to that lowest number there will work out for the graphical display that we want to look at Okay, now, the other piece of information um, that we're going to need here is we're going to need right, it, we need that frequency. So we're going to need to put that data into our table now and kind of and go back and rework a few things here. So let's go back into um, our stat. We're going to enter some data now, okay, because we need to, in L1, we need to put our class boundaries. So we're gonna go back to our stat. We're gonna go to enter, enter for at number one. Remember to clear the list. We press the up arrow. Press clear. And press enter. And now at this point, we need to put this our upper class limits in. So we have 123, 176, 229. 282, 335, 389, and 442. All right. Along with that, we also need our frequencies. So the 123 has six. The 176 has, whoops, excuse me, has ten. The 229 has ten. Zero, one, zero, one. Okay, so it all matches up. That's very important. So we don't have a dimension mismatch. That's a possible error that you might get. And step number three, change the graph from histogram to a line graph. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to second. And then we're going to do a statistical plot. We go into plot number one. So we go into plot number one, we press enter. Inside of plot number one, what they told us to do is to change this from histogram type 3 to the second option. You'll notice when we do that, it gives us an option for L1 and L2. This is more like a, a stat plot in some ways, where they're going to draw a line connecting them. At this point, once again, we want to go ahead and see, they just say to change the window. But remember, my little trick that I showed you that I really like to use and I share with all my students is on step number four, remember we're going to do the zoom stat okay and so every time we're doing anything with stats in this class we're going to go zoom and we're going on number nine and 
we press enter to choose number nine, and there we go. So it, it, now if I take this graphical display and I pull it onto my screen here, and give me one second to pull the other if you compare those two graphs very quickly, you'll see some characteristics that are very similar when you talk about the cumulus, I'm sorry, the frequency polygon. All right, so that's the key thing there. It's really a matter of flavor. Um, we can do the same thing here. We can hit the trace, and it tells us 123. There's six, and you know 176, and so forth. So it's just kind of another way to look at uh, the upper limits of the classes and the frequency of that's in those classes. All right, last one, just real quickly here. The last one now is to do an ojive, and so same thing. The information is already in there. Um, so to be able to do that, and to do the ojive, sorry about that. Um, I probably should have showed you the ojive before I showed you the frequency polygon, so because I had to go back in. Um, so what I did is I went back into the stat, edit. And I entered our data in back again into list three this time. Um, that way we can do the ojive. So let's go ahead and set the ojive up now. Get your data put in list three. Go second. Stat plot. We're going to go into plot number one. We're going to go down. And we're going to, you should be right now, you should be right here on number two, the frequency polygon. But we're going to use our side arrows and we're going to go on down to the cumulative frequency polygon or the ojive. Press enter to select it. It'll change to data list and ask you for your, where you want the data to come from. This is all of our data. So now notice it says L1 but I had stored my data in L3. If you look down here in blue and that's why it says alpha, okay, if you look down here in blue um, you'll see L3. So we need to change that to so the up arrow for L's, because it's going to be blue, and now we get L3. And at this point, um, we'll go ahead and we can see our information. It tells us the little marks and so forth. We'll just leave it as it is. Number one more time. Hit zoom. Choose number nine. And there we go. So what we have here is, is it's in this case right here, this is the cumulative frequency polygon that's given you an idea of where the data you know what our values are. Um, something somewhat confusing about this is that these values for the X and Y, but you can see here it lists every particular value. Okay, and that's going to be an OJIVE graph.